Welcome back to an instant reaction edition of the Net Report podcast. I'm your host, Mike Broadbent. Joining me once again is my co-host, Richie Schneiderite. We have our second four-star commitment of the class of 2024 for Rutgers football. Mm -hmm. Kaj Sanders just committed. He's a four-star defensive back out of Bergen Catholic. We previously talked about him a couple days ago. Um, just saying how, you know, you don't really land many top kids from Bergen Catholic. So kudos to the staff <laughs> for wrapping this one up. And yeah. uh, it's been a long winding journey of his commitment. So just talk about, uh, let's talk about Kaj as a player first, before we talk about how he ended up as a commitment to Rutgers. Uh, yeah, so Kaj is a player. I got to see him a couple times this uh, this spring, uh, whether it be the Under Armour camp, the uh, which was the most miserable camp I've ever been to, just pouring rain. <laughs> um, <clears throat> yeah, so he, he was there with Jalen McLean. Um, him and Jalen McLean are pretty close. They're both North Jersey guys, but he was there. I got to see him at Rivals camp. And Rivals camps, when I got to see him a little bit in – better uh better view i guess just because it wasn't raining it's uh, actually a really nice day but he's a uh, he's a legit 6'1 185 um that's what he measured out at at our rivals camp so it's, it's official numbers there um but he's just very physical at cornerback uh he's he's a good one-on-one -on -one guy uh he's not afraid of contact great hips good at, good reaction good uh read and reaction i should say he sees that ball and just kind of reads it perfectly almost and just makes a big play on it whether it be a big hit or whether he's going to go for the ball either or um, he's just a really underrated player and I'm saying underrated as he's what ranks, uh, where am I at? Number four in state. So I, I think he might, uh, just keep rising a little bit. I know previously, I think he was number, number six or number seven, but I, I think the kid's a full blown stud. I think he's a really good corner. Um, technically I know he's a safety, uh, in our database because that's where most schools kind of projected him at, but he's going to be a cornerback at Rutgers and Rutgers loves those tall, lengthy cornerbacks. Like it's. It's kind of pretty well known at this point. If you're not six one, you're not playing cornerback for Greg Schiano. <laughs> but uh, this this is a huge win for Rutgers. Um, top thirty safety in the country, mind you. Again, we're ranking him as a safety currently. But another four star in the class, second four star joining Corey Duff, and um, his main recruiter. It's not the DB coach. I mean, Morphy definitely played a factor, but it's Marquise Watson, <laughs> and Marquise Watson continues to be the best recruiter on this staff by far. Not only is he landing defensive linemen, but he's landing, now he's landing four-star cornerbacks at this point. He is by far the best recruiter on this staff, and there's no question whatsoever in that one, in my opinion. Yeah, I also kind of want to shout out Mark Orphy and Drew Lascari because they've, mm -hmm. from what you've heard, what I've heard, they've, they've done a quite good job recruiting guys. Uh, also, uh, you know, just look at, you know, who we've landed in terms of defensive mm -hmm. backs this, this class, and it's, it kind of speaks yeah. for itself. Uh, but yeah, Marquise continues to crush it. Um, <laughs> You said that they're looking at him as a corner. Yep. Rivals has him as a DB. Where, where in his game is the ambiguity? Like, why, why would some people see him as a, a DB, uh, as a safety, and some people see him as a corner? I'd say it's tough because, like, he does play safety for his high school team. So, like, most yeah. of his film, you're going to see him as as a safety. But, like I said before, Greg loves those tall, lengthy corners, and you know, I, I've seen him play man a lot. This uh, man to man a lot in the camps because that's basically what it is. It's just one on ones. Um, yeah. so you're not going to get that safety role there, but he's, he's a really good lockdown corner and he's on top of the ball on top of the, uh, the receiver every time. Um, I think we have some highlights from his rival camp series. We'll be tweeting out, um, if, if they're not already tweeted out. Um, and you'll, you'll kind of just see the way he, like I said, his re read and reaction is just amazing. And the way he moves his hips, he's, he, he's just going to be a lockdown guy in my opinion. He's, he's that good, but. Um, a lot of people like him at safety is because he's like that old school, hard hitting safety. Like there's another clip that I probably tweeted out by now, um, or someone on our accounts tweeted it out. Um, and it's just, he whacked the hell out of this. I think it was Don Bosco receiver or St. Joe's. It was one of them. And it's just, he just doesn't care. Like he throws his body <laughs> out there and it's like, I love that when you see that out of the DB, um, someone that I know you can't really do what he did in college because they're, they're probably going to call a flag at that point. Yeah. <laughs> because then that, that's what stinks. Like growing up, you used to see everyone just throw a hard hit back there at safety. And now it's like, you can't even touch the receiver almost. Um, but yeah, like, like I said before, he's just a really good player. Um, I would say basically his size where he's already like six, one, one eighty five, And by the time he gets in the weight room, he'll be like one ninety ish at the minimum, if not more. So I think that's what people kind of think. They're just going to pack on pounds and let him play safety. He'll be a hard hitter. He'll, he's a good uh, good read and react guy, so he's always going to see the ball. Um, so I can see – you know what? It might not even be crazy for him to play safety at Rutgers, but 
I, I think that he's going to stay or go to corner first, see what happens there, and then probably bump him over to safety if it doesn't work out. If it does work out, he just stays at corner. And that's that's kind of been, again, Shiano's MO when it comes to recruiting DBs. Like we see Thomas and Monclo rotate it back and forth a little bit. Shaquan Loyal was playing corner, uh, I want to say, last year or the year before. Now he sounds yep. like he's playing safety again. Um, if you're in between that range where you're like that 6'1", 180, 185 range, you could probably rotate back and forth until they figure out what's a better role for you. No, that totally makes sense. And at the same time, you kind of want to not only put them in the best position to make the NFL at a certain position, but also of course. put your team in the best position to utilize talent. Um, so we've talked about him as a player. Let's talk about his recruitment. How did he end up at Rutgers? Weird, talk man. about how much this has twist and turned over the last few weeks. Cause I know we highlighted it in the last podcast, but <clears throat> let's kind of go even deeper into that. Yeah. Going into June. Um, this is when we last talked to him. Uh, I shouldn't say last talked to him. The last time we talked to him going into June was rivals camp in late May. He basically was like, yeah, you know, I got three official visits. It's Wisconsin, South Carolina, North Carolina. And I'm like, okay, well, obviously it's one of those three schools. Um, prior to that, I want, I want to reverse a little bit because I forgot about this. He was, um, he was considered a Penn State lean for like six, seven months maybe. They added a couple safeties, and then they're like, it kind of was a mutual decision. Like, hey, you have too many safeties. I really don't want to go there if you have that many safeties, along with Penn State being like, all right, we're kind of full, so we don't really care. That's fine. Um, so he backed off of that. Then it was Wisconsin, South Carolina, North Carolina's official visits. It sounded like, <laughs> sounded at first like it was leaning South Carolina. Then all of a sudden it was leaning North Carolina because the, apparently the rumor was Wisconsin was too far away. Parents didn't like how it was too far away. Then like, oh, I want to say a week and a half ago, everyone's here in Wisconsin, Wisconsin, Wisconsin. Then it's just a complete switch up. Then you're here in North Carolina, North Carolina, North Carolina. And it's like, well, what the hell is going on? And then he like, um, he scheduled that late midweek visit uh, to Rutgers in uh, what was it? June 20th. I think it was. Yeah, and that, that's when they had Nair Daniels, him. Yeah, that was that weird midweek one where we yeah. just had the two consecutive June visit weekends. Mm -hmm. We thought we were done. Suddenly, you have the, the Florida four-star corner visiting midweek. <laughs> you have Kaj Sanders visiting midweek. Yeah, these are the kind of guys you you kind of you know drop you, everything to take yeah. the visit when they want to take it. So it made sense. But yeah, I, I do remember that. It's like, oh, you want to come on Tuesday? Yeah, that's fine. It don't matter. Come on, <laughs> like, we'll, we'll make it work. Let's, someone get the bus. Get this. Get everything ready. Um, but yeah, no, they, uh, they got him on campus and that was, uh, with Samari and Robinson too, who, who they ended up flipping. And, um, now, now it sounds like it is it not, it doesn't sound like it. They got two now, um, from that visit, which is, uh, which is huge. And this is just a great job. Like you said before, between the DBs coaches in, uh, Lascari and Orphe who were recruiting him, they've done a great job recruiting DBs with Noah Shaw and Antonio White on board already. Um, and then on top of that, Marquise Watson just continues to dominate the recruiting trail. I, if you would have told me even a year ago, or even I'll, I'll go back to like, I guess, December when Nuns got, or January when Nunzio Campanelli got let go, former mm -hmm. Bergen Catholic head coach. And I would have told you right now, like they had no shot at any Bergen Catholic kids before. Like yeah. when they had Nunzio, they have no shot now. Now I, I'm utterly shocked. And I think Alex kind of put it pretty well in his uh, post the other day, the final call on, Akash Sanders, it's like, if you would have asked me six months ago, I would have told you that probably not. Hell no, it ain't happening. And now they're back in the big north. And it's crazy. <laughs> yeah. And, and, in, and in your uh, war room that you posted yesterday, you said mm -hmm. you expect at least two four, two more four stars. So obviously Kaj is one. Yeah. Who do you, is this just like a generalize? I think that either somebody will get bumped up or that one of these guys that they're chasing will end up coming to Rutgers. That's a four star. No, I mean, well, there. This is where it gets interesting. So he's his best friend, or not just the best friend. One of his really, really close friends, who they share an advisor with, share whatever football with, and it, like he came to all the camps this year with, is Jalen McLean. I'm not saying they're gonna flip. Is that the Jalen Hall prep kid? Yeah, that's committed to Ohio State. Okay. Now I'm not saying they're gonna flip him. I, I, I'll be honest. I don't think Jalen McLean is Ohio State good. So we'll just start with that. Could he? Maybe down the line, whether it be getting dropped, whether it be just Ohio or mutual decision type thing where it's like, eh, he came to campus on the, the seven on seven camp on June 20th, 23rd, whatever the hell it was, 24th. I forget what day. Um, it was in late June. That seven on seven camp at Rutgers and the coaching staff, obviously all over him, hound, not hounded him, but like 
every time he had a free minute, he was he was talking to Rutgers coaches. Mm -hmm. Orphi, Lascari, um, Harris Simiak was talking to him a lot. Um, the re the relationship between the Rutgers staff and the Seton Hall prep head coach is is very close too, to the point where like Matt Hewitt w is pretty close with him as well. Um, so I, I don't want to say that could be one, but that could be one down the line, depending on what happens with Ohio state, obviously like he's committed there. I don't see that changing really right now or at all it down the line. Could it change? Of course. Now the other th factor for a four star would be you have multiple 5.7, three stars, Gabriel Winowich is right there. Who's right on the edge, right on the cusp, Ty clean and Ty cool Hill Lumen. Ty clean is the better one. I believe of the two, I always mix it up. One of them is better than two and I always forget, but they're very mm. close. Um, I could see one of them getting a bump in Florida as long as they play well. Uh, Dakari Gilly is someone that the staff is really high on. Our new Florida recruiting analyst in um, John Garcia Jr. loves his tape, hence why he went from unranked to 5.7 three-star. So that tells you kind of where he's at. I think he wanted to make him a four-star, but it's just so hard to go from unranked to four-star immediately. So I think yep. he's right on the cusp of it. Um, the only thing that hurts him kind of is his competition in Jacksonville. It's not the greatest in the world. Um, and then Antonio White, Antonio White is a full-fledged stud out of Georgia too. And he's a kid that he had multiple SEC offers. He had Auburn, he had, uh, I think it was Kentucky, Missouri, someone else. So he's one to keep an eye on. And I want to say there's even, it's tough. There's two others that could really be four stars as well. I love AJ Sarace. I think he's a great quarterback. I think he's a phenomenal quarterback. I've seen him multiple times this spring. Uh, I'm going to go see him at one of his workouts soon again, um, just to confirm everything I've already known. Um, there's really no reason for me to go see it again, but I, I just, I, the kid's a great thrower and he's accurate. He's good on the run. He's got a big 10 build already at six, two, like 200 pounds. Um, and I, I think he could definitely move up. And then Raynor Andrews is the wild card of the group that could move up in my opinion, just because he's so new to the game. And he's already, he's massive, he's 6'6", 320, offensive lineman. He's a Bahamas native, playing now in Miami, Florida. He's playing for a good program, a, a solid program. He's playing with the Lumen brothers. So, I mean, you're going up against them in practice every day. Definitely helps a little bit. But I think he has the potential to really rise up in the rankings. So, we'll just kind of wait and see what happens. But I think, I don't want to say all these guys are going to get four-star rankings or all these guys are going to get bumps. But I think that, at the very least, one of them will, right? <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of uh, a lot of opportunity for guys to move up. Like mm -hmm. you said, it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen. But when you look at all these guys, you think quite a few are underranked. Quite a few mm -hmm. are new to the game and could make big jumps in their senior year. So that totally yeah. makes sense. Of course. So, um, we'll so we've kind of the, – the last thing on this is we've heard some rumblings that Rutgers' NIL situation for football has gotten significantly better over the past few weeks and months. Did that play a factor in his recruitment at all, do you think? When we talked to Sanders at the Rivals camp, we asked we asked the kids, like, hey, NIL factor, blah, blah, blah. Said no, not really a factor at all whatsoever. Mind you, he has an advisor or mm -hmm. agent or whatever you want to call it in Latish Kinsler of Lifestyle Sports Agency. Lifestyle Sports Agency also has an Omar Cooper, just mind you. And just a little connection there. Latish Kinsler's <laughs> son is also a walk-on at Rutgers in Jordan Kinsler. Latish Kinsler's nep nephew is a three-star defensive tackle at Bergen Catholic, or uh, offensive lineman. I forget. I, I can't remember. And Elijah Kinsler. So he's he's another one to watch. Um, but mind you, great connection for Rutgers to have in the, uh, the NIL world, especially when you already have that connection on the basketball side. Now you have it on the football side, and it's like, oh, oh shit! Man, you just hear me out. It might be working. Mm -hmm. um, now I've said this before. I don't think it's a secret. Other Power Five schools are, are saying Rutgers is out there throwing NIL. I don't believe it personally. Um, I've, I've checked in on it. I haven't. And everyone I've talked to has said, no, that's not true. And that's just everyone's excuse nowadays. It's like, I lost a kid to Rutgers, NIL. NIL. I swear it's NIL. And it's like, all right. Short is North Carolina, who also <laughs> like doesn't throw NIL ever. Like, Mac Brown's clean as a whistle. Um, but, yeah. So, I mean, it, it's a tough call. So, I don't really think uh, – they're throwing NIL out there, but could they be secretive? Of course they could. Like no one knows really for sure. I know the only one that's like kind of obvious or I'll name them Michigan state, Miami, Texas, yep. A&M, like three big ones are pretty obvious. Um, there's some others out there. Georgia tech's been doing it for years. They have a significant NIL bank from what I've heard, which is intriguing, yeah. but I've heard, I, 
I've said this before, but I've talked to kids that say that is the worst visit they've ever been on is Georgia Tech. They said really? it's just just a shitty campus, shitty facilities. And I was like, damn, really? Of all places? Like, never go there. And I was like, okay, I didn't plan on it, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> yeah, I know it's in Atlanta, but I don't really know a whole lot other than that. Um, I, I had no idea. I just, we're at uh, Under Armour Camp. They're telling me, and I'm like, oh, all right. Well, hmm. Save your visits, kids. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've kind of exhausted everything on Kaj. Huge pickup for the program, second four-star of the class. Uh, this commitment bumped Rutgers into the top 20 of Rivals' yes. team rankings, and they are now, I believe, I don't know the exact, 18th. Okay. Yeah. So pretty big commitment, and this is the kind of commitment that you kind of need to stay in that top <clears throat> 30 range. Like You need to pick up a decent amount of four-stars. And honestly, the class of 24, while it is a very good class, this is the kind of class that, Rutgers needs to get year in and year out to really elevate yeah. itself from, you know, one of the bottom tier programs in the conference in terms of football to the middle tier. Because if you look at how teams like Nebraska, Iowa, even schools like Illinois, UCLA, mm -hmm. those are the kind of schools that we're going to be competing with for that middle ground. Yeah. They, these are the kind of classes they land every year. So mm -hmm. Rutgers just needs to continue this momentum. I think they're going to be better on the field this year. They better coaches, better players. So they just need to keep this momentum going, and I think they will. Um, but that's kind of everything on him. Uh, is there anything you wanted to touch on before you sign off here? Yes, I have one thing. So I found all his stats and rankings and all that good stuff from the Rivals Camp. So he posted the 10.8 second 100-meter time in track, not Rivals Camp, obviously. Okay. That is um, very similar to um, Josiah Brown, who you remember, um, who's also a speedster. So not only yep. is he fast, he also measured in six foot one, one eighty two. So that's pretty what I pretty much what I said. Seventy seven inch wing, wingspan. So that's uh, that's pretty significant for a corner. And like I said, Greg's loves those tall, lengthy corners. That would explain the length. Thirty one and a half inch arms. I I, don't, I guess that's pretty long. I don't really know. Um, do the math. Thirty one yeah. and a half inches is pretty fucking long. That's like <laughs> over two feet. Um. What do you call it? But yeah, no, he's, he's just, it's just a really good get for Rutgers. This is great. They're up to number, like you said, number 18 in the rankings now. Um, they're now number five in the Big Ten rankings or six if you count USC. That's, I would say yes, probably count USC at this point. And I think that's going to change soon for our uh, our database as well, because obviously they're going to be in the, <laughs> the Big Ten next year. So you kind of have to switch that up, it seems like. But uh, everyone keeps saying they're like, yeah, right. I know it's it's like top 20. Is Rutgers going to stay there? No, they're not going to stay there because these other schools are going to fill up. Like Georgia's got 20. There's no limits either anymore. It used to be 25. There's no limits this year and going forward. So these kids are going to, they're going to take 30 plus kids at most of these schools. Like Michigan's at 25. You think they're going to stop? Oh, Georgia's at 24. They're not going to stop. Like it's going to be like Penn State's at 21. I know they want 30 personally just because I, I know that one. Stanford's at 27. So I, I guess it's at 18 right now. Does it stay there? No. But does it stay top 40? I think there's a really good shot of it staying top 40 because there's a significant drop off once you get to like the, the late 20s, early 30s, because then you're looking at like 18, 12 commits, 10 commits, 18 commits, 20. There's like a couple 20 commit ones in there. But I think Rutgers will probably finish with a top 40 class. And like you said before, that's, that's kind of what they need at this point. And uh, at least if you're not going to do it every year, at least every other year, at the bare minimum, and then you could take some flyers on kids, like kind of, kind of like you did last year, and then go from there. But the recruiting is on a tear right now; it's not stopping. They're at twenty-one right now. Um, there's also next up. We'll do that little next up uh, segment on our boards too. But I'd say keep a close eye on Caden Brown. He will be at Shiano's barbecue event that they have at the end of July every year now. Um, so I would keep a very, very close eye on that because if he got invited there, it sounds like some things are starting to move a little, move forward a little bit. They also want to get a defensive tackle as well. Um, so that's something to monitor. Uh, they could wait and punt to the portal, which I mean, a lot of people are doing now because December, as soon as that portal window opens, that's, that's it. They're going to, yeah. they're going to push for guys and uh, we'll see. But I think Caden Brown's probably next up if I had to guess. And we still have a future cast in for him. He's going to be a really good player. I think he could be a actual stud at Rutgers, to be honest with you. And another feather in the cap of Marquise Watson. Yeah, absolutely. Um, thanks again for listening, guys. I know this went a little longer than our normal uh, commitment podcast, but I think it's 
it's for a reason. This is a big commitment. So we yeah. to get you as much mm-hmm. information as we possibly could on this kid. Um, another huge pickup for Rutgers and uh, Crociano. And uh, stay tuned to your podcast feeds. Stay tuned to the boards because uh, I don't think we're done in this class. I think we got a few more commitments that uh, could end up materializing. Uh, I want to say much more than that. But for me and Richie, this has been another edition of the Night Report Podcast. Signing off.